Hello, welcome to Still Print Intuitive Tarot. This is for August the 26th. So I did manage to do the Friday video, um, but I will give you a heads up that between now and the end of the month, if I'm only releasing one video or my schedule's a little erratic, um, as I said, I'm really needing to charge up my energy and rest um, so that I am in good shape to tackle the uh, actual official launch of the election season come, you know, after Labor Day. Thank you so very, very much for being here. I um, appreciate all of my subscribers, the donors. The comments are, are really um, are really grateful. I'm really grateful for. And, of course, the thumbs up just make me smile. So, thank you, thank you. You know, so this is interesting. Um, the other day, I, well, actually, three things have happened. One, I saw an interview with Adam Kinzinger, and he was, he made this statement that, a lot of the people who are like mega, like just followers, they sort of equate, um, that wasn't quite the word I used, but they see Trump as being sort of on par with or uh, the kind of person of Jesus Christ. Then I saw a clip um, some old footage, and it was that, that Donald Trump doing that, I'm the chosen one statement. And then um, I watched the movie Tammy Faye about, you know, Tammy Faye Baker and Jim Baker and that whole. And it was really interesting just to watch the dynamics and how the other evangelical ministers, TV personalities, controlled and manipulated sort of the narrative you know they wanted certain messages to get out and they wanted certain messages to not get out and it had nothing to do with actual any sort of religious connotation or belief structure it had to do with ratings donations and money and so that all kind of came together and conspired <laughs> in my little brain and I decided I wanted to take a look at how those followers actually see him. And, and you know, and we've touched on this before, right? I mean, but things have gone on. More and more information has come out that doesn't show him in a good light. And for the most part, when you try to nail people down on the behavior and say, how can you condone that? Their reply is always something along the lines of, you know, well, to be to be human is to sin and divine to forgive or whatever. That, And so it doesn't matter what he does. They're going to, you know, kind of some slack. So I want to do, I'm hoping to keep this to a slightly shorter reading today. Um, again, you know, attempt to conserve energy. So, here we go. Let's take a look at, and it's nice to see before I, you know, it's nice to see too that uh, Mitch McConnell and the grand old party um, is starting to get kind of cold feet about this election and realizes that, you know, they have crap candidates in a lot of cases and um, they're not anywhere near in the position of strength that they believed or perceived they were even a few months ago. Even though we all knew that that strength was false and that ultimately the Dems, whoops, the, dead, the Dems would um, prevail. Hang on. Look what fell out, as I was saying, um, that maybe they're not in the position they want to be in, Ten of Swords. So again, you know, chickens always come home to roost, don't they? Here we go. Let's take a look at Trump's most faithful followers. Trump's most faithful po followers. Trump's most faithful followers. Sometimes I kind of create tongue twisters when I don't intend to. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. The first four cards actually are going to tell almost the whole story. They see him. They truly do see him as um, as a partner. They see him as not their equal, but they see him as somebody who understands the burdens they carry, who understands them on an elemental level. In him, they have found, it's almost like they have been searching for like a person to follow as opposed to an idea. Because let's face it, you know, it was a couple thousand years ago that Christ was roaming around. And so they've kind of been really desperately seeking this person. Because, of course, the way I understand it, a lot of the whole evangelical movement is all about basically suffering on earth so you can join the kingdom of heaven and, um, you know, sort of following that path without question. But now they have found somebody that they can personalize, right? And they really, frighteningly, really do see him as a savior of sorts. He plays on their innocence. He plays on how naive they are. He plays on their emotions. He has set things up in such a way so that they are his crusaders. They are the ones who must fill his emotional needs the same way he fills theirs. He fills theirs by, by somehow they have figured out that this man who has no absolutely experience in their kind of life or lifestyle is the one who understands them best. So they believe he is protecting them almost to the point of being crucified. And they believe because of that, it is then incumbent upon them to defend him and protect him no matter what, irregardless. You know, he keeps secrets from them. He tells them stories. And because they, I'm sorry, I apologize to anybody who finds this offensive, but frankly, because they have sort of been raised in an environment where they are basically taught to not question, simply follow. They don't question anything. They don't question anything he says. They don't see the ironies. They don't see the bold-faced lies. They don't see the, the glaring secrets because they simply follow his words. That's what they do. In him, they have found a cause. In him, they have found A purpose. And the combination of him and Mitch McConnell were able to deliver unto them certain beliefs that they held very dear, like banning abortion. I know it's an interesting thing about that because when the whole abortion thing started in the 1960s and 70s, where it really started, you know, gaining momentum and notice, evangelicals did not think that it was their problem. They were like, I don't care what they do. This is a Catholic issue. So this is about the Pope and Catholics. This has nothing to do with us until they figure it out that, oh, wait a minute. They could really work this. They could use this. And so on a basic and fundamental level, 50 years ago, abortion was a non-issue. And now they've made it their issue and their cause. And the only thing that caused them to pull back a little bit was the ruckus that was created um, 
when um, Clarence Thomas's views came out about same-sex marriage and interracial marriage, although I don't think he said that, um, and it, it got so blown out of proportion and now everybody is pushing back. So it's not that they've forgotten or given up. They just think that they might have to wait a little while to sort of push through the rest of their very draconian agenda. Okay, but in in him, they saw that savior. They saw that person who could make manifest their highest wishes. The fact that, <laughs> the fact that he destroys everything and everybody he touches, the fact that he is on his own downward spiral, is not something they see, okay? And in fact, they really believe that he is so powerful that he really can create the energy and the momentum to sort of bring to being that kind of second coming of Christ. And that, of course, is those, those of them who actually don't think that's who he is. <clears throat> So, you know, they really are about just preserving that um, white 1950s attitude and experience. And of course, um, that 1950s white attitude has been whitewashed so that any of the real stuff that went on well, uh, you know, like DeSantis, um, he's just removing it from history. He's rewriting history. So they have a much more purified version of <clears throat> what that was. But in reality, in actuality, they don't really don't care what he does as long as he makes it happen. And because he made the abortion thing happen, they believe that he is invincible and they believe that there is truly nothing, nothing that he can't do. And the fact that they are being like set up for profound disappointment, they just don't see it. All they see in their heads is that he can lead them to victory. And the fact that he can't, they just don't see it. It's like willing, you know, it's like willingly having blinders on, right? They refuse to see or acknowledge anything that doesn't conform to their belief structure. And, you know, the donors, the big money people, the big communicators, they're pulling back. But he is hooked into the mom and pops. And he, they have, you know, we, we say this often about politicians, right? Like they hooked their wagon to his star. Well, so have they, um, and they really do see him as that person who's going to bring them that kingdom of heaven. So I guess the next question is like, so what happens next? Like truly, what happens next? I'm not going to add those cards in. I'm going to leave those out, but I am going to reshuffle the deck. And I want to take a look at where this goes. Followers, current trajectory follows, followers, current trajectory, followers, current trajectory. What do we have here? For as long as they can possibly hold on, they will absolutely see him as this Messiah. I'm I, they're not going to be anxious to see anything different. That's what they want to see. And if they have to, 
keep themselves blinded and completely wrapped up and completely removed from actual reality as he continues to steal them blind, that's okay because they will give him emotionally whatever he needs. They He gives them something they need emotionally and so they are more than prepared to give it back to him. And because, you know, he can't connect with all of them. Well, the very best way, of course, to connect is with money. So send me your money and I will continue to be your champion. And they will not see, they will not see that he is his own champion and no one else's. They're not going to see it. They really, really are going to stay in this sort of blinded and restricted space because it is the reality that they choose, even though it's completely, completely subjective. There are some that are going to be disappointed um, when justice comes knocking, okay? The problem is there's also going to be some who take that disappointment and actually turn it into, you know, some sort of um, a, of a rebellion. Is that rebellion going to get out of hand? No. In part, because even though there's sort of this desire on their part, because they still believe that they're going to somehow bring along this second coming, um, it's going to be disorganized. It's going to be just scattered and it's really really not going to be able to build or gain momentum because they um don't know how frankly you know they they don't they're not going to be able to sustain it for the long term and yes there are some of those who are going to take their last breath still believing him and believing every little thing he says and does. Um, but I think that they will go quiet as more and more he himself withdraws because he's going to be so busy um, <clears throat> sort of dealing with what he's dealing with. This is the thing, even if he announces I suspect at some point he will come up with a really good reason to withdraw. But I don't even think he's going to announce. Um, because that way he can continue. And like it's, it takes a long time. I don't remember when the cutoff is. But that cutoff to announce is like a really far way away. Okay. It's not that just as soon as the midterms are over he can announce and it's all wonderful. He has a lot of time to continue the grift. Okay, until there is a, a that cutoff. And I think that that's exactly what's going to happen. And then at that point, he's going to, you know, come up with some crazy reason. And um, I don't believe he's even going to announce in any significant or serious way. And that's going to disappoint a lot of them. But they'll persevere. They'll go quiet, they'll go under rocks, and they'll continue to believe what they choose to believe because, frankly, they've been taught to believe whatever they're told and not question. And that's sad. But as of right now, that's where we're at. Okay. Until next time, take care. Be well. Enjoy the weekend. It's here. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.